join Forum IS Academy, trusted by hundreds of toppers, including IS Rank 1 Shruti Sharma. Good evening aspirants, welcome to the Hindu news analysis discussion brought to you by Forum IAS for the date 31st March 2023. These are the list of news articles for today's discussion. Today we will be covering 5 topics from science and technology, governance and history. Alongside this we will also be covering 2 previous year prelims questions and a mains practice question for the day. So with this straight away let us move to the first article of the day. First topic back to school. 22.7 lakh adults gained literacy and numeracy skills this year. In this news topic discussion, we will be discussing about the new Literacy India program. First, let us see about the status of uh, adult illiteracy in India. See, as per the uh, 2011 census, the absolute number of non-literates of the country in 15 years and above age group is 25.76 crores. And as per the Sakshar Bharat program, only about 7.64 uh, crore persons are certified as literates in our country. And moreover, data from the government of India estimates that currently around 18.12 crore adults are still non-literates in India. So addressing illiteracy in India had become a vital task for the government now. And so the government is taking many steps in order to fight illiteracy. In that way, the article says that newly drafted Nav Bharat Sakshartha Karyakaram or New India Literacy Program is working well in achieving adult literacy in India. So let us know more about that uh, from prelims angle. See, New India Literacy Program is a program that is recently came into implementation. Uh, the period of implementation is 2022 to 2027 and know that the aim of the scheme is to cover all the aspects of adult education and also to align the adult education with national education policy of 2020. Know that it is a centrally sponsored scheme that is the funds are shared between the center and states for implementation of the scheme. Further, as a progressive step, the government has also decided to use the term education for all instead of adult education. This is because the terminology adult education is uh, not properly incorporating the all non-literates of 15 years and above. So the term education for all will include efforts to make sure even a 15 year old child gets education in India. By using such terms, the government of India is making it clear that the focus of education is given to all people irrespective of their age. And know that uh, this scheme that we are talking about, the new India literacy uh, program is implemented by Ministry of Education in convergence with various ministries and department. And know that the scheme will be implemented through volunteerism through online mode. That is the scheme relies on volunteer based teaching. This is because there is no adequate uh, allocation of funds provided by the government to hire qualified teachers for teaching the adults. Here know that the training, orientation, workshop of volunteers can be organized through face to face mode also. Now if we come to the objective of this scheme, uh, the objective is to impart not only foundational literacy and numeracy but also to cover other components which are necessary for a citizen of 21st century such as critical life skills which includes uh, financial literacy, digital literacy, commercial skills and also awareness about the health care, child care etc. Then the objective includes vocational skills. This is done with a view toward obtaining local employment so that livelihood of the adult is ensured. Then as usual, this scheme caters to basic education including preparatory, middle and secondary level of education. Finally, as a distinct step, this program fo focuses on continuing education that is engaging the adults in holistic adult education courses in arts, science, recreation as well as uh, other topics of 
interest to, to the local learners. Then coming to the intended beneficiaries, the scheme will cover non-literates of age 15 years and above in all states and union territories. Then the program targets the year 2022 to 2027. That is within the five year period, the program aims to target five crore learners. And for achieving this target of five crore learn learners, steps are taken to ensure that at least one crore illiterate adults per year become literates by using online teaching, learning and assessment system. So by the year 2027, the target of 5 crore learners can be achieved. Now coming to the salient features of the new India literacy program, know that schools are the basic unit for the implementation of the scheme. Then the scheme provides flexibility for the states and union territories to undertake innovative actions. Since there is lack of uh, funds to implement this scheme, the government tries using the support of private sector and NGOs. So here the scheme says CSR that is the corporate social responsibility or philanthropic support can be received. Then the government intends to use technology in order to impart adult education for wider coverage of the scheme. Then to evaluate the performance of the program, the performance grading index for states and union territories will be re released. This performance grading index will show the performance of states and union territories on a yearly basis by measuring progress through UDI SC portal that is the Unified District Information System for Education. Then as a measure for social justice, the program provides high priority to girls women, SCST, OBC and minorities who can substantially and immediately benefit from adult education. And know that the focus of this program will be on all aspirational districts and districts with literacy rates that are less than the national and state average. So that is all about the article. In this article we saw about the new India literacy program as well as its objective and salient features. With this, let us close the topic and move to the second topic. Second topic, GPT-4, a shift from what it can do to what it augurs. This news article is about GPT, which stands for Generative Pre-Training Transformer. This Generative Pre-Training Transformer technology combines the use of both machine learning and artificial intelligence. Let's know more about AI and uh, machine learning before moving further. See, artificial intelligence is the branch of computer science that is concerned with making computers behave like humans. And simply, AI refers to the ability of machines to perform cognitive tasks like thinking, perceiving, learning, problem solving and decision making. In short, AI is a technology that could mimic human intelligence. And now if you take the machine learning, it is an application of artificial intelligence and it provides the system the ability to automatically learn and improve from certain experiences without being pro programmed. Thus we can say machine learning focuses on the development of computer program that can access data and use that data to learn for themselves. Using such applications, GPT produces new and creative contents. They may be short and a long term content, synthetic media and even deep fakes. The text which we give as input to GPT are known as prompts and capabilities like large language modules, neural translation, information understanding and reinforcement learning have made GPT possible to produce such valuable contents. Also in order to make use of such technologies, top tech companies like Microsoft, Google and others have established commercial AI labs for researching and publishing academic papers in order to accelerate these kind of AI innovations. In addition to this issue, let us know few applications of GPT for better understanding. Firstly, know that GPT helps in generating personalized social media posts, blogs and marketing texts and even video copies by providing a text prompt to generative AI service, for example, chat GPT. And secondly, many startups are exploring services to create their brand logo and align with AI 
text messaging then generative ai like github can generate code and help with developer productivity in addition to it it can suggest entire functions snippets and even fully functioning modules and generate code in a real time also know that generative ai of gpt can also be used for generating synthetic data for data augmentation so even creating additional training data to train and test ai mod models can be done using it fifthly the generative ai can also help create and simulate complex engineering design and architecture even house floor plans are made using generative image and video technology and finally know that generative ai such as deep mind alpha fold can predict the shape of protein by which it can help health care professionals with their medical diagnosis so these are few applications now let us see the difference between gpt 3.5 and gpt 4 that is mentioned in the article see gpt 4 is the latest ai model and it is said to be the advanced ai model as of now the chat gpt which we used to uh, uh, see in news is a gpt 3.5 ai model so gpt 4 is sup supposedly bigger faster and more accurate than chat gpt see firstly gpt 3 and gpt 3.5 only operated in one modality that is user can ask question to a model only in text format so other formats are not made available there but gpt4 is a multi model that is it allows the user to feed even images as inputs and asks output information from the gpt accordingly secondly gpt4 is harder to trick one of the biggest drawback of generative models like chat gpt is that they can get facts mixed up and produce misinformation but a remedy to the previous text the company open ai which developed gpt4 said that it had spent nearly six months training gpt4 using a lesson from chat gpt so the company is now confident that gpt4 is a remarkable improvement over its predecessor then the article says that gpt can take into context up to 25000 words as input this is said to be an improvement of more than 8 times when compared to gpt 3.5 then another positive uh, point about gpt is its performance in several tests that were uh, designed for humans in majority of such tests gpt4 performed much better than average and as an evidence to it open ai has released preliminary data to show that GPT-4 can do a lot of white collar work especially programming and writing jobs. So from this article we can say that GPT-4 has been created with an intention to overcome the flaws that GPT-3.5 committed in the past. So that is what it is said in the article. Now coming to the uh, concerns raised in the article. See, firstly, if AI technology is used irresponsibly without any appropriate safeguards, then it could create harm and adversely impact the society. That is, AI tech are capable enough to misuse data, perpetuate biases, exclusion and even lead to discrimination. That is because if the model itself are trained on biased and non-inclusive data, they will generate biased outputs only. Then, secondly, it has the ability to create content for malicious purposes such as deep fakes disinformation and propaganda data generated using such tech can be uh, used as offensive or inappropriate content thirdly know that these systems can potentially access sensitive information that raises the concerns about data privacy and security fourthly the accountability factor has to be considered here see it is very much challenging to determine who is responsible for the content generated by the generative AI system. Hence, making it difficult to hold anyone accountable for any harm resulting from its use. So, to clear all the obstacles and to move towards uh, ethical use of such advanced technology, it is important to take certain measures. Uh, such measures are like enforcing uh, ethical guidelines, then conducting regular audits for fairness, then adding adequate policies, regulations, conduct awareness and education drives for ethical use of generating AI. This is all about the article. So with this we have come to the end of this article discussion. Now let us move to the third topic. Third topic, why comb a satyagraha and a fight for social justice. 
See, the contribution of Ramaswamy Periyar in introducing social reforms has been enormous and his legacy is still alive today in India. Vaikum Satyagraha and self-respect movement are significant contribution of him that played an important role in removing barriers in Indian society. This news article is regarding that only. First, let us see about Vaikum Satyagraha. See, March 30th of 1924, witnessed a non-violent Satyagraha movement in Vaikom, which is a town in Kotayam, Kerala. It was a mass movement that had demanded lower caste people be given the right to use a public path which was present in front of the famous Vaikom Mahadev temple. See, initially people from upper mentality caste did not allow the people from backward classes to use the roads that are in front of the Mahadeva temple. But this ignorant custom of maintaining purity came to light when three people from different communities were prevented from entering the streets in the year 1924. After knowing about the issue, the Committee Against uh, Untouchability launched the protest on March 30th of 1924 and this protest got its support from the Congress party which was waiting to gain the support of all sections of people in order to attain freedom from the Britishers. And know that some of the prominent leaders who took part in the movement are K. Madhavan, K. P. Kesava Mohan and George Joseph on the advice of Mahatma Gandhi. See, the protest sustained itself for more than one and a half years where many people who participated in the Satyagraha were arrested. The police arrested even the leaders of the movement. So after some time, the movement became leaderless which paved the way for Periyar to lead the movement. As a request from Nilakandan Nambudri and George Joseph, Periyar agreed to lead the movement. And after a point of time, this movement of Periyar became significant that culminated with Temple Entry Proclamation of Kerala in the year 1936. See, after a period of time, this movement gained high uh, attention and it had the potential of becoming a pan-India movement. Here we have to know that even Akalis from Punjab and Tamil people from Tamil Nadu helped the protesters to meet their demand. But on the advice of uh, MK Gandhi, the movement ended as a local protest because uh, Gandhi did not want to make it a pan-India movement. The reason was that India at that time was fighting its, uh, for its freedom from Britishers. So although the Vaikom Satyagraha is a progressive movement, internal friction among Indians were to be avoided at all levels. So MK Gandhi was more concerned about this and he did not want, want the orthodox sections to turn towards the government for help. So this is why Gandhi did not uh, want the movement to become pan-India. And in short we can say the Vaikom Satyagraha was a testing ground for Gandhian principles of Satyagraha. It was tested and proved as a most effective means for the first time and so this movement managed the backward class people in using the roads around the Vaiko Mahadeva temple. These are the informations which are provided in the article. Since the article talks about the contribution of Periyar, let us know about uh, the self-respect movement in brief. See, the self-respect movement was dedicated to the goal of giving non brahmins a sense of pride based on their Dravidian past. Secondly, its aim was to achieve a society where backward castes have equal human rights and encourage backward castes to have self-respect in the context of caste-based society. Know that unlike the Justice Party, the self-respect movement was popular in its appeal. Though it began as a social reform movement, its effect were felt in the political field. Here, the anti-Brahminism and self-respect marriages were the two important aspects of self-respect movement. Uh, here, the movement encouraged inter-caste, inter-religious marriages. Along with that, it also encouraged marriage ceremonies without Brahmin priests. In this manner, self-respect movement is said to be filled with the sense of self-respect and above all, self-confidence to fight against social injustice perpetrated by the orthodox sections. Here we can say that the self-respect movement was largely responsible for making an effective change in the social life of the vast majority of people through its ceaseless propaganda. So that is all about the article. In this news discussion, we saw about Vaikom Satyagraha and also about the self-respect movement. 
So with this, let us close this topic and move to the next, next topic of the day. Fourth topic, the peso effect in liquids. See, scientists have reported evidence of the pesoelectric effect in liquids for the first time in 143 years. The effect has been found for 143 years and meanwhile, over such period of time, the effect was found only in solids. But only now, the applicability of this effect is found in liquids. So in this context, let us know more about the pesoelectric effect. See, pesoelectric effect is the ability of certain material to generate an electric charge in response to applied mechanical stress. That is, when the external stress is applied across the pesoelectric material, then a voltage is generated across the material. One of the unique characteristics of the pesoelectric effect is that it is reversible in nature. Meaning that materials exhibiting the direct pesoelectric effect also exhibit the converse pesoelectric effect. In other words, we can say these materials can lead to generation of stress when an electric field is applied to them. And then know that the pesoelectric effect is very useful within many applications, especially in applications such as production and detection of sound, generation of high voltages, electronic frequency generation, micro balances, etc. It also has its use acting as an ignition source for cigarette lighters. Here know that the quartz is the most famous piezoelectric crystal. In the quartz crystal, the molecular structure is in such a way that silicon and the oxygen atom share an electron. And when a mechanical stress is induced on the material, the oxygen atom becomes electronegative while the silicon atom becomes electropositive. So because of this polarization, the voltage is generated and leads to generation of electricity. This is all about the piezoelectric effect. This effect in quartz crystal happens because of the organized structure of oxygen and silicon atom atoms only. But this organized structure is not possible in liquid, right? And moreover, the liquids exhibit the structure of the container in which they are placed. So how this piezoelectric effect is in liquids are uh, still unknown and the scientists are curious in finding it. Besides, they say that normal and ionic liquids that were tested in the study respond very differently. As a evidence to this statement, we have to know that the finding of piezoelectric effect have been observed only in the ionic liquids. So that is all about the article. In this we saw what is piezoelectric effect from prelims angle and uh, that is enough uh, from the exam point of view. With this let us close the topic and move to the final topic of the day. Final topic, drugs for rare diseases get customs duty relief. Recently union government declared there will be no import duty on drugs and foods for special medical purposes and such waiver of import duty is only on drugs and medicines that are for the personal use and treatment of rare diseases under the national policy for rare diseases. So in this discussion, let us see about rare diseases and about the national policy for rare diseases 2021. See, there is no single or universal definition of rare diseases. Generally speaking, a rare disease is one that occurs rarely. Different countries have different definitions of rare diseases and all definitions are based on how often the diseases occur per 1000 or 10,000 people. According to WHO, rare diseases are those that occurs in one or fewer people in every 1000 people. Other nations defi definition vary depending on their unique populations, healthcare infrastructures and other factors like disease severity, threat to life etc. For example, in the United States, rare diseases are defined as disease or condition that affects fewer than 2 lakh patients in the whole country. Likewise, in the European Union, a disease is defined as rare when it affects fewer than 1 in 2000 people. In India, a disease or disorder is defined as rare when it affects fewer than 1 in 2500 individuals. And according to the National Health Portal of Government of India, there are approximately 7000 rare diseases and in that approximately 70% of rare diseases are genetic in origin. And according to the National Policy for Rare Diseases document, India has close to 50 to 100 million people 
who are affected by rare diseases or disorder and in that almost 80 percentage of the rare condition patients are children so the policy reports that high morbidity and mortality rate of these life threatening diseases are the leading cause for majority of children not reaching their adulthood and now coming to the examples of uh, rare diseases know that inherited cancers autoimmune disorders congenital malform malformations or few rare diseases in India. Now let us see the salient features of national policy for rare diseases 2021. See the policy aims to lower the incidence and prevalence of rare diseases based on integrated and comprehensive preventive strategy. The strategy for that includes awareness generation, counseling programs, providing affordable health care among others. Then coming to the categorization know that the policy categorizes rare diseases into three groups they are group 1 group 2 and group 3 in group 1 disorders amenable to one time curative treatments are included in group 2 diseases requiring long term or lifelong treatments are included in group 3 diseases which requires definite treatment and for which definite treatments are available is included as a measure to overcome these issues the policy provides government support. The government will provide financial support of up to rupees 20 lakh under the Rashtriya Arokya Nidhi. This is provided for the treatment of those rare diseases listed under the group 1. And know that the beneficiaries for such financial assistance would not be limited to BPL families. And about 40% of the population those who are uh, eligible under the Pradhan Mantri Jan Arokya Yojana will also be eligible for assistance. Then for group 2 kind of diseases, the state government can consider providing specific support to patients. It includes a rare diseases that can be managed with specific diets or hormonal supplements or other relatively low cost interventions. Then the policy highlights the need for voluntary funding. Here the government will assist in voluntary crowdfunding for the treatment of group, uh, group 3. It is taken into account because it will be difficult to fully finance the treatment of high cost rare diseases of group 3. So that is why government is uh, opting for voluntary uh, crowdfunding in addressing the rare diseases. Then the policy talks about the center for excellence. The initiative intends to boost tertiary healthcare facility for preventing and treating uncommon diseases. This is done by designated certain premier government treasury hospitals as center of excellence and these designated center of excellence would also these designated center of excellence would also receive up to 5 crore for upgrading their testing facilities. Then the last thing is about Nidan Kendras. See Nidan Kendras will be set up by the department of biotechnology under unique methods of management and treatment of inherited disorders project. This Nidan Kendras are mandated to carry out genetic testing and counseling services. In addition to these, Nidan Kendras will be set up for screening, testing and counseling of rare diseases and also to provide treatment if the facilities exist. So that is all about the article. So in the news article we saw what is rare diseases and also about the national policy for rare diseases 2021. With this, let us close the news articles discussion and move to the previous year prelims question discussion. Coming to the previous year prelims questions, see today we will be discussing two questions which appeared in the uh, year 2021 prelims. Consider the first question with reference to India, the term halbi, ho and qui pertains to the options given are option A, dance forms of Northwest India, option B, musical instruments, option C, prehistoric cave painting option d tribal languages see this is a direct fact based question uh, some of the popular languages spoken by the tribes of india are uh, batri billi halbi ho and kui etc so the answer for this question is option d uh, tribal languages see halbi which is said here is spoken by over 5.25 lakh people living in the states of maharashtra and madhya pradesh uh, this language belongs to the group of Indo-Aryan tribal languages and uh, some other important Dravidian tribal languages are 
qui and ho which is mentioned here so the correct answer for this question is option d tribal languages second question what is the position of right to property in india the options given are option a legal right available to citizens only option b legal right available to any person option c fundamental right available to citizens only option d neither fundamental right nor legal right see according to the constitution article 300a no person shall be deprived of his property except by the authority of law since the article says that no person shall be deprived so the statement legal rights available to citizens only is wrong then this article was inserted in indian constitution by the 40, 44th constitutional amendment act before that right to property was a fundamental right under article 31 so now after the 44th constitutional amendment act this is not a fundamental right so option c is also wrong but this right to property that is mentioned in the article 300a is a legal and a constitutional right so the answer for this question is option b legal right that is available to any person consider the mains practice question discuss the significance of the vaikom satyagraha and the self respect movement in modern indian history the aspirants can take note of this question and you can write the answers and post it in the comment section given below with this we have come to the end of the news articles discussion and previous year questions discussion if you like the uh, method of teaching and if you can understand the concepts well please like share comment and subscribe to forum ias academy in various social media platforms thank you for listening good day